Aloha, everyone. I see there's some people joining in. I want to take a moment to welcome everyone. We may have some stragglers that come in in a few moments, but um, welcome to our next series, the High Spa High Five series. We uh, had some really great response to our last series that we did, and we wanted to get something else on the docket for you. So today is our first episode or our first uh, session for our um, high five vendor series, five reasons for partnership. And I want to thank all of you for being here. Uh, as the board was starting to think about what would be beneficial for our members moving forward uh, as we all navigate COVID, we thought, you know, what better way than to partner with our vendors and they're at the forefront of how we get through this and how we get back to the new COVID normal, right? Um, and so we have a really great lineup for you over the next several weeks, but the, the nuts and bolts of this series is to talk about the main reasons that we partner with some of our vendors that are here locally in the islands, but also some of those vendors that are international, some based from the mainland. Um, and we have the five pillars that we decided were really important for us to talk through, one being sustainability. The sense of place is really important to all of us out here in the islands. Of course, um, effectiveness, profitability, and our business support that we can get from our vendors. So that's what you're going to be hearing about over the next several weeks from different vendors, today being the first series. Uh, with me today, um, and apologies, I didn't introduce myself. My name is Jennifer. I'm the vice president of the Hawaii Spa Association, but I also have the rest of the board here with me. I have Sean, who is our president, Amanda, who is our secretary. We also have Daryl joining us as our treasurer. And I'd also like to take a moment to highlight Cecilia, one of our past presidents who has now joined us as part of our advisory board. So thank you all for being here. Um, we're going to be recording this session. So for those that don't have the opportunity to join us live today, uh, if you need to revert back or you want to reference some of the video and some of the tips and tricks that you see today, please feel free to do so. This will get posted on our website on the education page at hawaiispaassociation.com. Uh, and we do have the chat box that's in the bottom. So if you have questions throughout this presentation, feel free to put your questions in the chat box and we'll have uh, some time for that at the end of the session today. So without further ado, I would love to introduce our first uh, partner vendor for today's series, Chad May. He's joining us from Commercial Fitness Equipment as the president. Uh, he also has the uh, solution side of the business as well. So he deals in not only the equipment side, but also in the sanitation and all of the products that you need. So it really is a one-stop shop as you're looking to reopen your businesses. And you may be thinking, well, what if I don't have a fitness center? Chad and his team can help you with all aspects uh, to get your business up and running and ready to go. Um, so he's going to give us a lot of industry overall what he's seeing out there tips and tricks but also specifically from his company um, and how he fits into those five pillars that we talked about. Chad's coming to us with over 20 years of experience. Uh, he's got long-standing relationships here in the Hawaii market uh, and we also have someone from his team based here in Oahu that he'll introduce later on as well. So without further ado, Chad, welcome. Thank you for being here and uh, let's get started. My pleasure. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me to speak and to be the first. So hopefully folks realize this is an open dialogue. We'll look forward to some discussions in the chat screen. And uh, just thanks again for the invitation. I do have Mitch Lagrasse uh, on the Zoom call as well. Mitch, uh, you may know Mitch's wife, Abigail, as director of SPA at Turtle Bay. Uh, Mitch works for us on the commercial fitness side. Uh, as well as now our CFE services side. So we do have local representation and we're very excited to, to have him as a part of the team for the last year and it's been awesome to have him aboard. So thanks for joining us, Mitch. Uh, and so many of you I do know through our sister company and we've been calling on the islands with companies like Precore and Escape for about seven years and have recently, um, despite all the challenges of COVID, we finished up the Kukio installation last week with a very limited crew since we couldn't fly anybody over that we normally do on a big installation. But if you get a chance, uh, we'll be posting it on social media. You can take a look at some of the out of the box things that those folks decided to do. It is, uh, 
It is definitely going to be a jewel of functional fitness and interactive fitness in the islands. Uh, but today I'm here primarily to talk about CFE Services, which is our uh, hygiene and sanitation company. Uh, we supply and service uh, sanitation products and services throughout the nation to uh, hospitality chains, uh, the fitness industry. Uh, right now, if my voice is a little hoarse, we are very active in K through 12. We're trying to get schools open, um, colleges, uh, and of course, our wonderful friends uh, in the spa industry. So I figured we'd talk just a little bit briefly about who we are, because I think it's important with those five reasons that to talk to vendors and to, to interact with them as you understand what we're about. Um, we are a family company. We're about 25 employees, uh, but our priorities are, are very clear as far as what we want to see happen uh, and when we go to market. So let me see. Uh, the first thing with us in sanitation is it has to be um, effective, right? I mean, we're all dealing with a, a, a chemical uh, and a virus out there that we, we need to be able to uh, combat. So that's really the first thing that we want to highlight is what we, what we present uh, to folks has been vetted by industry professionals. Uh, we actually brought on about a month ago a registered nurse uh, that has been working very actively in COVID emergency rooms. Uh, she decided for a life change, which uh, I can fully support, not wanting to uh, be uh, in the, uh, I'm going to stop my video so I don't have any feedback coming through here. Just one second. There we go. And so when we look at manufacturers and suppliers that we want to get in concert with, they have to really make sure that, that our priorities are aligned with theirs. Uh, and one of the most important ones is effective formulas. Most, if not all, of the manufacturers that we work with have been very active in the sanitation space long before COVID. Uh, and if there's one thing that you've probably noticed, it seems like everyone and their brother is trying to sell hand sanitizer, uh, trying to sell PP&E, and trying to claim that they've got solutions that really uh, probably haven't been vetted and don't have the efficacy that you know, all of us want to have when we tell folks why our facility is clean, why it is sanitized, and, you know, why it's different. Uh, so as you look at our vendors, just make sure that you look at other vendors that, and see if they have had a course of being uh, effectual in sanitation long before COVID. And then another thing is it has to be earth friendly if we're going to bring it to market. That can be a challenge because obviously cleaning chemicals, wipes, and cleaning procedures the first thing they have to do is they have to be effective. They have to have that kill rate and it has to be something that the EPA recognizes as, as viable to uh, defeat COVID and you know the other viruses that are always lurking out there. But while we do that, our team, we wanted to make sure that when we bring products on that we don't lose sight of taking care of the planet. Um, caustic chemicals such as bleach and quats are still very commonly used. We've noticed uh, the janitorial side of the house when COVID hit went and just bought up huge amounts of those kinds of harsh chemicals. And sadly, uh, when you look at safety data sheets, which you know many of us, we were aware of safety data sheets, but today uh, we all have to be intimately aware because sanitation is crossing over from the custodial world to all of us uh, of being you know, stewards of making sure we're, we're presenting products and using them safely. But so many of those caustic chemicals, they also lose their effectiveness very quickly. Um, we just finished a long conversation with the recreation center earlier today that is still using bleach and asking them what's been the reaction for folks around that chemical. Um, how long is it good for, which bleach is good for about three hours before it loses its efficacy. Uh, but then watching what happens to the environment is a lot of this unused sanitizer then ends up returning into, you know, the water system. So make sure read safety data sheets and see if the chemicals that are being used in your facility require PP and E to apply and make sure that they're safe to be used around patrons. Uh, many are not and can cause serious issues. And then for us, another priority is make it easy to work with. Um, some folks want that personal touch, which we've got account reps that you can work with, but also folks want to know that they can just simply set an initial order or possibly reorder uh, based on some automated procedures. So uh, we do that well. 
Um, we also can bundle items that typically were not available to bundle, such as electrostatic sprayers with wipes, with hand sanitizer, uh, with PP&E. And much of what we're gonna talk about uh, is in stock that we've got in two warehouses here in the West Coast. And then we are stocking currently in limited amounts on uh, three of the Hawaiian islands as well. Well, kind of what brought us here, uh, how to reopen, right? And for many of us that aren't open, we've had a chance to rethink our opening procedures probably too often and probably right in the middle of the night as well. Um, we were privileged a few years ago um, to open up CFE services and acquiring um, you know, sanitation products and beginning to reopen is, it's just an, a daunting task for most folks. So how can we do it? Well, we ended up really working with several folks in different industries. Um, our team started to sit in on Rex roundtables with uh, club owners that were exceptional at planning. Uh, we started to sit with colleges in the uh, International uh, Health and Racket Sports Association, as well as NURSA, which controls all the college recreational sports, and just looked at folks that were very cerebral with their planning of what are you going to do to plan even before these government mandates come out. And we started to take and pool this information because most folks weren't, weren't visiting with other folks in similar industries and how they were going to provide, you know, a sanitation package. Uh, we could see very quickly after we had this document published um, by URSA and NURSA and, and ISPA that it was going to go far beyond just supplying and acquiring cleaning chemicals and sanitizing chemicals and PPE supplies. Uh, it was really going to have this approach. And so our meetings with our, our spa friends, with our hospitality friends, our school friends, it, we really are encouraging folks to take a step back. And we know the government mandates are changing. They seem like they change daily. But just planning, maybe not for right now, but for what if. And taking a look at what does it look like, right, for our staff, our guests to enter our facility. How will they navigate safely through the facility? And how will they exit? Um, encouraging questions like what is expected of my staff in cleaning it's like we said earlier it's not just custodial services that are, is going to be needed to do this it's going to be turning rooms it's going to be high touch points and who has ownership of those areas and uh, do they realize they have ownership of that area um, entry what are you going to do regarding temperature taking and that's a topic that in some areas it's not being enforced it's not mandated uh, but we are finding in other areas it definitely is. Uh, so what does that look like in your facility? Is it a bottleneck? Are we having someone that we're putting at risk possibly just standing there? Are we tracking names in case there is contact tracing? Um, so those are discussions we talk about. Um, some of the cost associated with staffing um, or, and contact tracing and buying of these chemicals is at an all-time high. Um, there are options that we'll highlight later that are currently in use in hospitality with units that can touchlessly take temperatures. Uh, colleges and other venues are using it. Uh, it can interact with your back of the house software. Uh, so it's, it seems like something a few months ago we would say it doesn't make any sense, but we're finding more and more folks are wanting to get data on systems and processes that could make it easy and cost effective to safely navigate, again, not just uh, guests, but employees through buildings. Other questions, what is expected of guests? And at times people have been hesitant to uh, put certain restrictions or certain agreements together for guests, but you know, we're discovering, as I'm sure you are, that if it's very clear what's expected of the guests, are they wearing masks? Uh, do they have any responsibility if you've got a fitness center? Are they wiping down equipment? Uh, if so, or what kind of wipe are they using? Is it, is it safe for them to use or is it one of the EPA and wipes that really only your staff should be using with PP&E? So that's, that's really how we've kind of changed, not just being a commodity business, but really consulting with folks and providing an open dialogue to, to see what is the, the plan for, for sanitation. Well, one of the first ones, sustainability. Um, we really, really have tried to vet products that avoid 
the amount of plastic that had been going into our uh, environment. So several vendors out there still supply hand sanitizer and still supply body wash through cartridges. Well, A, those are very tough to find today. Um, they're like liquid gold. But secondly, you can just imagine what's happening uh, in the world of plastic refuse. You know, we already have so large of an issue with that floating in our oceans that if we can supply refillable units. So most of our uh, hand soaps, uh, hand sanitizers come in either a 32 ounce refillable container, which you can then just take gallon jugs and refill. Uh, as well as we've developed a, a custom system that actually lets you take a gallon jug and a salon pump and have a really attractive stainless steel container so you're not needing to fill that as often. Um, your wipes, what are they made of? Do they, are they biodegradable? Um, that is a, it's a hot topic right now. We do have certain spas and certain luxury properties that have done away with towels in many of the fitness spaces. And they've decided to just offer wipes uh, to make sure that they've got the proper amount of chemical uh, on each wipe as guests or staff members decide to uh, wipe down units. Uh, safe sanitizers, we brought that up before and we're gonna talk a little bit more in depth and I encourage you to, you know, if there are questions about some of the sanitizers you're currently using, we, we're fielding those questions regularly. One thing uh, to make sure of is, is what can you do to limit the amount of plastic and bottles that you're buying that concentrate in. Um, in addition, not only are we going to talk about some options where you can make your own, but then not having to have those products shipped from the mainland and obviously with carbon emissions. But one product spotlight in that su sustainability area that I really wanted to highlight is something that might be new to the spa industry, but it is not new to the world of the medical industry. Um, there's a company in the Northwest called Saltwater Biocides. If you were to take one thing away, I would look at this word, hypochlorous acid, write it down and research it after this Zoom meeting. Um, you will find that it is an EPAN registered chemical that is pH, uh, pH neutral. Uh, it is safe to apply in the presence of people per OSHA standards. And if you've ever eaten vegetables from a grocery store that has a misting system, you've eaten hypochlorous acid. Um, it is found inside our white blood cells. It's what kills viruses. Uh, it was developed years ago to keep those little water lines clean. Then the EPA actually did some studies and realized this friendly chlorine has a terrific kill rate of just about every virus out there. So they can get that 99.99% kill rate. It is the least toxic of all EPA registered chemicals. It is found currently in items such as uh, EvaClean Pure Tabs. Uh, we'll talk about Pure Tabs here in a little bit. That's a tablet version of hypochlorous acid. But what saltwater biocides actually does is it enables you as a facility to make your own uh, sanitizer, your own cleaner, and your own disinfectant. Uh, it's in use in colleges. It's in use at one uh, major uh, cruise line at this point, and we're actively engaged with, with a couple of others. We're finding if folks are spending more, and, and we're talking about different departments, so maybe if your spa is a standalone, you have your own budget. Maybe custodial services shares a budget with you if your spa is part of a hotel. But we're finding this big unifying factor as we work with folks that if you are part of a hotel, making sure that we get janitorial services and the spa all on the same page. Because if you are spending more than $600 a month in cleaning chemicals, this is where this particular unit, which takes saltwater brine and turns it into those three products, uh, really has a, a dynamic fit. And for us and for me and the way that we look at Hawaii, uh, A, shipping is incredibly expensive be the fact that supply chain is, is an issue. We are well stocked on a number of items, but some of the hypochlorous tablets that we'll talk about in a little bit where you don't make it yourself, if you didn't order those back in April, you're not going to get those until November. That's how backwards some of these chemicals are. So this one in particular, we were really excited. There is a reference um, on island. It's a nursing home chain called uh, Rocky Mountain Care Facilities. And I believe the name of the home there is different. 
I'll try to have Mitch get that out to everybody, but they've been using it. It's um, actually sprayed directly through a nebulizer all through the facility regularly, and they even give little bottles of it to their guests. So it's a, it's a dynamic product. Now, sense of place. This is one that uh, took me a little bit to, I think, really wrap my mind around because I think of Hawaii as a very special place, a place that is delicate in the sense that it definitely needs to be cared for. So in looking at sense of place, I really wanted to drill down on prevention. Um, and I know that there have been some peaks and valleys on you know, COVID reporting and what's happening over there. So really having clear tools that if we can stop sick people from getting together and entering our building, then that's really one of the first things and is kind of protecting what, what we can protect. I mentioned the temperature screening and some of you may have joined a earlier town hall that we did with this group, uh, but there are systems out there that can integrate, uh, for instance, checking in employees. Um, there are temperature screening devices that have facial recognition that have passed numerous security measures. We've got these units in use at one major uh, hospitality chain. We've got them in use at another major fast food chain, and that fast food chain is actually using it to clock people in. Now, it seems maybe a little Star Trekky or far-fetched to think that this might be something you would need in your facility. We just throw it out there because we see a huge paradigm shift in other industries like K through 12, college, and again, specifically in Europe with this unit and one of the major hotel chains of being able to safely check someone's temperature and then let that unit talk via a software interface with possibly your spa software, your software that would check guests into a hotel, or possibly even your payroll system. Uh, the goal is to do it safely, record information, and be able to move people through. So that's something I, I definitely think in, in looking at prevention. And then also air purification. We'll talk a little bit more and show a video. Uh, but that is a product in, in particular, a product category that you want to add some caution. Really take a look if you are looking at air purifiers. Uh, there are a lot of Johnny-come-latelys. And I've, I'll probably say it at nauseum, but look at the efficacy. Look at were they in this space long before COVID? Um, and it's important. Are you looking to try to retrofit your current HVAC system and adding things like MRF filters? Uh, so there's a lot of folks, I think, preying on what we all want to do, which is to have as clean of air and surfaces as we can, but possibly bringing things to market that don't have the science behind them. So prevention probably is one of the big things for sense of place. And then stocking. We've got a couple of interesting advantages. The on-site generator that I mentioned before that's where you can produce a, a catholite cleaner, which you could use as a pH neutral spray cleaner. And then the analyte is the hypochlorous. Uh, that is a spray on or mist. It can be done with an electrostatic sprayer. You've probably seen those. You can even do it with a simple um, atomizer that we've provided to, to montage. Um, you can provide a large unit that we've got called the cart. So if you've got pool decks and large open spaces that you uh, you want to sanitize quickly. Uh, but the, the beautiful thing about this particular option is that if it is on island, uh, we're even talking to facilities on the big island of sharing the cost in one uh, and then shipping the chemical out to various locations. So uh, just, just a terrific option. And then we are stocking some products on island right now. Uh, generally, we are talking about wipes, uh, hand sanitizer, dispensers for wipes, and dispensers for hand sanitizer. Uh, we've got those on Maui, on Oahu, uh, and uh, on the Big Island. Uh, we'll be adding to that um, as we see things begin to open up, and uh, we'll, be, we'll probably be sending over our next container load once we finish a lot of the K-12 through orders that we're processing on the various islands. So uh, I think making sure that we can have Hawaii be as autonomous as we can as we navigate what's going to be the new normal for us is, is, is an important priority so that we can make sure there isn't this breakdown in, in uh, supply chain issues. Uh, effectiveness. 
uh, I love the fact that this was a topic because the reason for partnership is you have to have something that is effective and there is an ever growing demand for sanitation products. Like I said, many new players that lack efficacy. If in doubt, when you get an ad that pushes through to you, ask for white paper studies. Don't be ashamed to. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we were going to talk just a little bit about a partnership we have with Eris. Uh, Eris is a company that developed active peer technology. I've got a two minute little video, uh, but it's really going to explain some of the science behind it. And again, these are folks that have been in this space working with uh, the federal government with major sports league teams long before uh, COVID was here. And if you would have any interest in seeing some of the white paper, we can send that out. Um, but there are studies uh, that have been done in elementary schools, colleges and universities that have brought these air filtration units in, which are plug and play, that then enable the number of sick days to come down, um, the average number of uh, reports of the flu to come down. So I'm going to play, actually, let me see if I can go back here. Pardon me. And I played a little video for you on Active Pure. DOCs and air pollutants. Now, with Active Pure, you can eliminate these and other harmful contaminants in the air and surfaces in your home or office. Active Pure goes beyond traditional air purification systems and is the only air cleaning technology awarded the prestigious certified space technology seal of approval by the Space Foundation. So how does Active Pure really work to protect you? Microscopic oxygen and water molecules in the air enter the purification unit and pass through the Active Pure honeycomb matrix. While inside, the molecules are transformed into friendly yet powerful oxidizers. Once released, the molecules become supercharged purification warriors. Like an army on a mission, they seek to rapidly destroy contaminants, fungi, mold, and odor-causing bacteria. In many cases, Active Pure is combined with ionization. To show our Active Pure technology at work, we create smoke in a sealed chamber that has no filtration. When we turn on our supercharged molecules, you can see the smoke swirl and then disappear, showing the charge cleaners at work. This is what the technology does to the microscopic impurities that you can't see in your air and on surfaces. Active Pure technology is entirely safe for both humans and pets, and the technology has been proven to be effective and powerful in leading university studies to eliminate numerous harmful contaminants. Active Pure was created in the USA by a leading technology company with over 90 years of history that has been recognized by the Smithsonian. We own worldwide rights to this proprietary Active Pure technology, and it is the only certified space technology that works to continuously clean and protect air and surfaces 24 hours a day. Active Pure is available in a variety of products. Talk to your local distributor for more information or to have Active Pure installed in your home or business. Take advantage of this opportunity. All right, well, let me put you back into my head here. I'm going to go back to this slide since we just got to miss. There we go. So that's Active Pure. Um, we are actively working with a number of large groups. If you've got a facility where you would like to see an actual plan put together, uh, Eris has a group of engineers. Uh, it, it, there's no cost to it. We just need to know ceiling heights and we can come up with uh, a plan for how many units would really you know, be able to safely cover. Uh, so that, that is definitely a, a unit we are talking about a lot. I'm gonna play this little video too. Um, this is a technology that I'm sure many of you are aware of. Uh, this is that tablet form of Hypochlorus. Uh, we are a distributor for EvaClean, and they are owned by EarthSafe. Uh, again, we, it's touted by the EPA as one of the less toxic, least toxic sanitizing options out there. This is a little story that one of the owners of EvaClean about three years ago, uh, why she decided to get into the business of sanitizers. Um, and so I thought I'd share this with you just to give you an idea of the success rate it's, happen it's having in the fitness space uh, as well as beyond.
within a few hours, my arm is completely swelled up and it started to get worse. I went into the emergency room. Turns out it was MRSA. My feeling from being at the gym was that the machinery that I was using was improperly sanitized. I hear from a lot of customers that they're concerned that the machines aren't being wiped down, that someone had a cold prior, and they're nervous about getting germs. I want to make sure I stay healthy. I go to the gym to be healthy, not to get sick. You want the gym to look neat and clean and whatnot, but to actually disinfect and, and get rid of bacteria and viruses that in the past has been so cost prohibitive. The battery-powered Protexus electrostatic sprayer and its custom-designed pump system atomizes the PureTab's disinfecting or sanitizing solution. The droplets pass an electrode inside the nozzle, creating a magnetic charge spray that seeks out and wraps around all touch points and grounded room surfaces. As a gym owner, knowing that it's actually being cleaned, we can pretty much disinfect the whole entire gym within an hour, which is great. I'm not mechanically inclined by any means, but it's literally unlocking the trigger and, and spraying. And this really wraps around the whole piece of equipment. So it's amazing. You're getting all of the little places that you normally wouldn't be able to get with a regular sprayer. You're getting all the nooks and crannies, all the little crevices. We can just go in there, spray it down, spin bikes, yoga mats, medicine balls, kettlebells, all the benches, the locker room, the sauna, and the steam room. This will not only disinfect and inhibit the mold, but it'll also inhibit the smell. I think what's really needed is for gyms to be able to say, hey, we got clean equipment, we got clean locker rooms, clean showers, and it's not going to be a problem for you here. I would say you have to use this product. I would go to your gym. It's cleaner, it's healthier, it's just a better option. Getting MRSA, I was completely surprised. I had just started working for EarthSafe when this happened to me, and it couldn't have happened at a most opportune moment in a way because it really showed me how important it is to have some sort of preventive protocol for infection anywhere but more particularly for me at the gym because of my personal experience going out and talking to people i'm not just a salesperson i can tell them this is something that happened to me this is something that i truly believe in i know what can be done and how we can do better All right, so I'll try to keep on time. I know Sean's timing me and I'm a little behind, so I will, I will make up for that. Um, that particular product is in use at hospitality chains like Marriott, large hospital chains, first responders. Again, it's hypochlorous, and for folks that aren't going to be producing their own chemical, it is a viable option. It's, it's just a terrific product. Profits. None of us were ready for what sanitation was going to cost. Um, we're all lacking in revenue sorely right now, uh, and our costs have escalated. Facilities that are open, on average, when we pull them, we're spending three to four times the amount that we used to. Um, so for us, being able to offer bundled discounts where you can take products that maybe you have been purchasing uh, either off-island or you're, you're purchasing from four or five different manufacturers, uh, oftentimes those can be bundled and put onto a pallet and shipped over and, and, and again, just savings. We're also trying to encourage our spa friends to look at making a group buy and maybe then centrally uh, distributing it based on what island you're at, what side of the island. Uh, so we're happy to talk about those options. Uh, avoiding outbreaks, right? Uh, the, one of the things that's going to shut us down faster than anything is if we don't have a good sanitation plan and we're able to execute it. So putting those plans together, and then inspiring confidence. Um, you know guests can read if we're comfortable or if we're not comfortable. Um, you can take a look at what Montage has done and what a number of the other spas have done, and when they communicate how it's different to come in today because the facility is being sanitized, um, that message then just inspires folks to keep coming back. Uh, business support, what can we do to assist you? Uh, like we mentioned earlier, we can do an assessment and a plan that involves entry all the way to exit. 
and talk about different locations. Also talk about chemical interactions, again, to make sure that what you are using, possibly in the spa, is it going to contradict with what other areas are gonna be uh, in other departments are using as well. And then putting together a plan that we can and execute. And then online purchasing. Uh, we have several large clients that have their own dedicated portals on our webpage. Uh, makes it easy then to track live inventory. Uh, and we set discount codes where they can then, if they want to talk to us, because we love talking to you guys, we can. But if you also simply want to get online and purchase, uh, we can do that as well. As we begin to bring more product into the islands, we'll be updating that specifically for Hawaii so that you know what is on each island. Uh, and then, you know, other items will be able to be um, UPSed. So that is our presentation. So I will uh, stop sharing and happy to answer uh, any questions. Wow, thank you, Chad. That is awesome. I think all of us were taking notes on that um, the whole time. I know I have a couple of questions, but I'm going to kick it to Cecilia because I know she's got some burning questions that were coming through the chat box too. Yes, I do. I actually wanted to ask you about the uh, six feet, you know, the working out and having the uh, people spread out a little bit, but people are actually working out and they're breathing harder. And how can you, how can we do this social distancing expectation? Um, you know, it's really hard to work out with a mask. I actually went to work out this morning and in a very large fitness. And, uh, you know, we were having a, a challenge. You constantly have to have your mask when you're moving from equipment to equipment. Any suggestions? What are you seeing in the uh, uh, other fitness doing? You know, it really depends on what the government dictates. And as you know, one of the things in our industry that we hate is seeing that we were lobbed in with the same uh, group as bars and restaurants. So sitting in a movie theater or having a, a bunch of uh, adult beverages is not the same as trying to get fit and keeping yourself healthy. So we have noticed people moving outside and in Hawaii and spe specifically, the opportunity to put things outside and space people apart is, is spectacular. Masks are a dividing topic right now. And I can, I can tell you, looking at major health club chains, there are those that are just saying, you will wear a mask period. And then there are those that are just giving up and just saying, we'll just see what happens. Um, Midtown Athletic Club, that's, that's somebody, if you want to take a look at a, probably one of the best operators in, in our industry that's just on the health club side, they're doing a great job. And they are moving people outside. They're setting up parking lots. Um, so it is, it is a challenge. I can't say there's a, a perfect uh, fix. We, there are things like sneeze guards that people are putting in between machines maybe maybe not there is some efficacy issues with that because you are breathing quite heavily uh, but masks i think are going to be here for the foreseeable future and providing you know repurposed space that maybe you're not using ballrooms we're repurposing basketball courts because those won't be coming online anytime soon any any kind of court space or ballroom space that's not going to be used for the sheer number of people and just letting people spread out um, we've seen that successful great great Thank you. Great presentation. Amazing feedback. I love the gun sanitation. I think it's going to make our uh, sanitation processes a lot easier. It does. It does. And it's, it's all about planning now um, and thinking about, you know, we, all the what ifs of when are we going to get to reopen? We don't know. But stockpiling now and buying it in measured quantities is important because it's, uh, the back orders on some of those kinds of sanitizers is still, you know, 90 to 120 days from date of order. And that doesn't fit in when all of a sudden we get two weeks notice that we can reopen. But you also doing part of your company is helping people reopen and uh, kind of lay out and shut down some of the equipment. I think you even offer some amazing signage that is really cute that uh, they're out of uh, commission so you can do the uh, social distancing a lot nicer um, I think it's uh, a lot of people don't know that you offer those services yeah yeah those have been really popular we did some custom ones uh, for the Mayborn for Holly um, and it's it enables you to not have to put around you know out of service tape and make it look like a crime scene you know, people are already a little uncomfortable. So if you can make it aesthetically pleasing to take cardio units or strength units 
out of commission and just have it, have it branded towards your facility, it, it just, again, lets folks breathe a little bit easier. So yeah, all that custom signage is available on our website too. Good, good. And I have one, one question, I'm sorry, I have one question for me is, you always write the wellness trends for the year. And I know this year has been a very unique, I always like to see you blog. And uh, what are you foreseeing that is gonna be the new uh, wellness uh, trend for this year or whatever is left of? <laughs> You know, that's a great question. I would say I'm going to defer and I'll try to find it. too many Rex roundtables, right? You kind of forget the last one you were on, but something that one of the, one of the key consultants in the health club and boutique space said that kind of resonated with me is people are working out at home enough now that the new norm of coming in and working out may have changed as a paradigm. Like it's just changed. So finding a way to engage digitally with your guest or with your member in addition to having them come in. So maybe your most avid workout person, if you offer memberships or guests were coming in every day, possibly they're going to want to do that in their room and then also come in. So being able to digitally engage with things like Adva Gym or WellBeats, systems that trainers can use to offer specific training protocols that they could use either at home or outside or in your gym, being, doing that right now is going to put you at the forefront and the folks that don't have that probably that t crossed are going to be struggling because we are just going to have a different environment when things fully open back up and we're we're used to doing things in the workout space a little different at home thank you chad appreciate it yeah my pleasure chad, chad i'd just like to jump in on uh, as a follow-up to what cecilia was talking about earlier uh, particularly with regard to social distancing and you know, we're always uh, told now the six foot expectation of, you know, social distance, distancing where possible, particularly in a gym environment where you're breathing hard and you're, um, you know, working out. And do you, in a, particularly in a gym environment, suggest law, uh, more than six feet um, as a precaution if possible? Or has that come under discussion at all? It has, and I would say the colleges are probably more erring on the side of caution because they aren't monetized, right, by memberships. Uh, the private sector, I would say, wants to, at times, get more people in, you know, because that's revenue, right? I, I would, you know, not to throw a brand name out in our industry, but Equinox has one of the best landing pages for what they're doing. They are spacing people out a little more than six feet apart. Um, the state of Arkansas is 12 feet apart. Um, so it really depends on the, on, on what the person's doing. You know, you let the scientist speak to his six feet. You know, there are a lot that's saying it's, that's not sufficient. Um, but I think it really depends. The, the new norm of wearing masks, you're just going to find people aren't able to do the hit training and things like they used to be able to do because you're right. You know, I, I am, I am fortunate. I've got a home gym here at home because I know people that sell that stuff. Uh, and I've been wearing an air restricting mask when I work out just to kind of get ready so that if, you know, some of the facilities do open back up that we used to frequent in the gym world um, that I, you know, we got the lungs ready to do it. So I know that's long winded, not a clear answer, but yeah, we do see some of the operators that are looking at more science spreading people out. Indeed. Thank you. Uh, Chad, I have a quick question on the on the gun that the video that it was showing for the fitness centers. Can that be used in the rest of the facility as well in the locker rooms and or is that something that you're seeing specifically for the fitness centers? No, I had a number of videos that could have shown. I just chose that one because I know Flavia really well and that experience kind of resonates. Yeah. Um, it it is used. So we were happy to be a distributor long before COVID. Uh, everybody wanted to be a distributor post COVID and the first folks that got all of this were first responders, major hospital chains, um, nursing homes, daycare facilities, and then they began to allocate our orders. And we, with our partners, we ordered, you know, three quarters of a million dollars of product that is coming in every, you know, six to eight weeks. So it is used everywhere. Um, Marriott uses it to sanitize all their rooms. Uh, you can, depending on how you want to dilute it, it's got various kill rates for how heavy a you know, dilution rate you're putting down. 
but at 1,028 parts per million, you know, that's going to be about an eight minute COVID kill and it's not going to leave a film. And so people will spray, you know, there's a food safe uh, parts per million that you can use as well. So it's, it is used absolutely everywhere. And that's why we're encouraging folks, that same chemical can be manufactured by you with that saltwater biocide. So if you start looking at a large, you know, large facility such as where you're at right there, if, if, the, if all that can be shared, um, I, I can't mention the names, but we've got one major hospitality group that is looking to make a, a major switch and put one of these generators in each one of their, uh, their hotels. So yeah, it, it extends far beyond. I think Delta Airlines, that's what currently they're using is the, the hypochlorous in, in the airplanes and lots and lots of uh, airports as well. Awesome. And for those on the call that might be interested in just getting an overview of what pricing would look like, is there a place that we can go to see just, you know, what would the generator start at price-wise and the air filtration? Um, where can we direct the members to go to look for that? You know, I could send out to you and Sean, we've just got a standard price sheet that has hyperlinks to all of the products. Um, and then we could just create custom packages from there. For the, the bio side uh, saltwater uh, generator, generally if you're spending more than $600 a month in cleaning chemicals and spray on sanitizers, that pencils out really quick. So right. we've, that's kind of the magic number. Um, for the Guardian air purifiers, uh, list price on those are $24.99. They normally go out with more than one unit at, at $17.99. And there are breaks at $500 and there are breaks. We've even got a major health club chain that uh, I will be jumping on a call with after this that, you know, they're, they're looking at their facilities and they held Eris's feet to the fire. Um, we're putting 75 in per club. Um, wow. And so when you start talking about that price, you know, you're coming down around $1,000 a unit. Right. Uh, but the beautiful thing about it is you're not stressing out your HVAC and the system is on 24 seven. It isn't, you know, you're not putting MRF filters and HEPA filters on an existing HVAC system that's not designed to be on 24 seven and not designed to have that kind of resistance. Right. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Any other questions out there? I don't see anything coming in the chat box, but um, if there are any questions that somebody thinks of after this call, you can always email uh, the board um, and we can get those questions to chat on your behalf. Once we receive that pricing, we'll make sure that that gets sent out to anybody uh, that's interested. Um, but thank you for the questions that came through. And thank you to Chad for, for taking time with us today. I know you have a very busy schedule with, uh, I can't imagine a business being more valuable right now for all of us um, that with regards to cleaning, disinfection, sanitation, it's on everyone's mind. And the fact that you as a, an active Hawaii Spa Association member really wanted to create the connections with people in this room and those who will also review the recorded version of this. It, it's such an honor to have you as part of our organization. So thank you. My pleasure, and I cannot wait to never Zoom with all of you again and see you in person. <laughs> yeah, amen to that. Amen. <laughs> okay, uh, at this point, I'm going to kick it over to Daryl. Daryl's going to close us out today. He's got a couple of um, announcements for upcoming and our next series. Uh, so, Daryl. Oh, you're on mute, Daryl. My apologies. Uh, thank you, Jen, and thank you, Chad. Uh, you know, it's, I found it absolutely amazing at what the new normal is going to be for us. This is just being an inkling. Um, you know, considering that uh, your company's commercial fitness equipment and look how the world has changed as to what is now being regarded as fitness equipment. So I think in the spa industry in general, we're going to see some big changes and uh, when we, for those locations that are opening up and will be opening up, um, you know, as we've always said, uh, one of the best things to, the best uh, sources of success is flexibility. So Chad, thank you very much for expo exposing us to that aspect, which uh, I personally found absolutely fascinating. So thank you for that. Um, next week, we do have uh, uh, our next presentation in our series of six uh, presentations with vendors. 
Next week will be presented by Valerie Plotnikova of Yonka Paris. And it'll be a completely different uh, subject, and, but I'm sure equally interesting and stimulating. So look out for that. Same link, same time, same place next week. Um, I'd also like to mention that uh, you may have also received, and if you haven't received, please let us know um, about our free membership that we've extended during this challenging year. Uh, the last thing that I'm sure we are looking to do is to ex uh, spend additional amounts on things that we might be able to pass up. So um, the Hawaii Spa Association has uh, extended a free membership to everybody. And so for the people who have been peripherally involved or you know people who haven't been involved, this will be an opportunity to get involved uh, at no cost to yourself or your organization. And um, Mitch, I'm uh, looking at you and hoping that you can pass that information on to Abigail. Um, we would look forward to having her participate in, uh, in Hawaii Spa Association and Turtle Bay is certainly an integral part of our island. So uh, hopefully uh, we look forward to Abigail becoming a member of us. And, um, but otherwise, thank you very much for all your attention. Uh, it's uh, just a great opportunity, despite our various geographical locations, to be able to get together. So Chad, thank you. Mitch, thank you. Uh, the board, thank you. And uh, look forward to seeing you all next week. Great. And I just, I want to close Appreciate out it. one thing on that. Um, if anyone is interested in a, a free membership, if you don't know the status of your current membership, because it's been a while, or what have you, um, just pop us an email at info at hawaiispaassociation.com and we're happy to get that dialogue going with you. Feel free to uh, take the recorded version of this and share it with people, share the link. Um, you can share uh, the information, the blog posts that we have with any of your friends. And you know, we do welcome people to join our association who are not only living and working here in Hawaii, but also people on the mainland who have a very vested interest in the success of, of uh, Hawaii spas and Hawaii businesses in general. Um, it's really important to us to create those connections because we're, we don't, none of us are in silos. And I think we know that uh, it's a critically important that we create and maintain connections and information share. So this is an opportunity to, to uh, get someone involved in the association. You know, consider your gift to them. Send this link out to them saying, I'm gifting you with a membership. Uh, because it, it'll give them access to all of these great resources. They can jump on these incredible educational calls and uh, really build a partnership, which is what we're all about. So that's all I wanted to say. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, again for joining, and we'll see you next week. Aloha. Thank Aloha. you.